Hello friends, my name is Mal and I am the owner and maker of Made by Muni and Mal. Welcome back to my channel. So in my last video, I showed you how I wrap vinyl around cups with a handle. So we did a skinny mug and this week I wanted to kind of build on that technique and do another one right on top of it. So we're going to be doing another mug tutorial, another vinyl wrapped mug, but we're going to add a little bit of distressing and make it a totally different look. If you haven't seen my last video, I would recommend watching that either before you watch this one, you can watch it and come back, or watch it after you watch this one because I really go into depth on how to get your vinyl to wrap around those cups that have handles. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you do, don't forget to give it a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new videos. We upload every single Tuesday and Saturday. Everything I'm using, as always, will be linked down in the description box below along with our social media links and discount codes for you if you want to save a little moolah. Okay, I think that's it. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Let's go. For this design, we're going to be using a 20 ounce camper mug from Craft Haven. In my last tutorial, I used a skinny mug, so I wanted to show you how I wrap the thicker mugs. It's essentially the same, but we're going to be using a full vinyl wrap for this one and we're also using the Paper Studio removable vinyl from Hobby Lobby. So this is kind of a matte finish vinyl and it's not as flexible as regular vinyl that you would order from, you know, another place. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a tutorial on how I do it with this vinyl. So I'm going to measure my cup how I normally do and wrap it around, cut off any excess, and then I'm going to take my ruler and set it up on my table with my mug so that I can draw a straight line up and down my cup. I want to make sure that I am holding everything really steady and that everything is straight before I draw my line on. But this line helps me align my vinyl perfectly straight. So sometimes eyeballing it, things look straight when they're not. So I just take that extra step now to make sure that my line is perfectly straight. I'm going to peel back a little bit of the backing from my vinyl so I have about an inch to two inches of that vinyl adhesive exposed. And I'm gonna lay my cup down and I'm starting on the side so that my handle will be the last thing I deal with and wrap. So I'm going to line up my vinyl perfectly with that line I drew on my cup. And I'm going to wrap how I normally do. So I'm going to gently pull the backing back as I push the vinyl onto the cup. So here I'm just making sure that I have enough vinyl to get me all the way around the cup. And just make sure that you go really slowly with this. Make sure that you're kind of pushing on the top and bottom to make sure you don't have any gapping or bubbling or anything kind of as you go. And I've also started cutting off the backing kind of as I wrap the vinyl around the cup so that I don't have a ton of backing bunching up and kind of messing me up. Once I get to the handle portion, I'm going to cut off any remaining backing that I have from vinyl I've already pressed onto the cup. And then I'm going to push the vinyl as far up to the handle as I can. So the vinyl is like right up on the handle and like right there. Then I'm gonna cut off any extra backing one more time. And then what I'm going to do is take my scissors and just cut little slits where I kind of have indented my vinyl from my handle. I started with my X-Acto knife, just kind of sliced a little hole in there. And this is pretty much the same process that I did in my last video. We're just gonna work around the handle. So I'm cutting those little slits and then I'm going to take my scissors and get in there and just trim a little slice. In my last video, I kind of trimmed around and I had a little bit of gapping and I'm not doing that this time. I'm just gonna work around the handle and then cut off any excess with my craft knife after. So we did a pretty good job because this lined up perfectly, very lucky. So I'm taking the backing off kind of section by section and just smoothing down the vinyl and we shouldn't have any bubbling or gapping. If you do, if you have any vinyl that's sitting up against your handle, you can just take your X-Acto knife and cut off that excess rather than cutting it off before you lay your vinyl down, which is what I did in my last video. I would do it this way instead. Then after the bottom is laid, I'm gonna go up to the top and do the exact same thing. I'm going to take off that backing, 
and then just kind of pull the vinyl really tight and lay it down as straight as I can. And then I'm gonna take my knife and cut off that excess too that's up at the top of the handle. And you just wanna be careful as you do this, you don't wanna cut off too much. I like to cut right up against the top of the handle and make sure that we don't have any stainless steel showing through. Then for the middle, finally, I'm going to take off the backing for that as well. And then just kind of push it through the handle how I normally would kind of going back and forth, making sure we don't have any bubbles or anything there either. I am so proud of how perfectly this lined up. This never happens for me. I'm always, no matter how hard I try, I'm always a little tiny bit off and things aren't perfectly straight. But this one, like the vinyl gods were with me on this one. It got lined up perfectly. You can't even see the seam. And I was like jumping for joy. I'm going to finish off the top and bottom of the cup the same way that I always do. So I'm gonna pull the top excess off really tight and then I'm going to run my knife along that to cut off any excess. Then hold my knife at a 45 degree angle to get rid of all those little stragglers. For the bottom, I lied. I'm not gonna do it the same way I always do. Because we're going to paint over this vinyl, I don't wanna deal with any lifting or possible issues with the bottom vinyl. So I just kind of freehand cut it up on the body of the cup because we're gonna paint over it and you're not even gonna know where the vinyl ends. So I just opted to avoid any struggle that could come in the future. So now what we're going to do is add our vinyl to our handle. So I kind of roughly measured how thick it would be. And what I'm going to do is cut that piece. I'm just trimming it to make sure the edge is straight. And then I'm going to peel back a little piece of the backing how I would with a cup, like a full wrap. I'm going to attach that little piece to the top of my handle and then as you would expect I'm going to push the vinyl onto the handle while simultaneously pushing the backing off in the process. So I'm going to smooth that off and then I'll cut off the excess from the bottom, take that away, and then I'm going to kind of trim the excess how I would from the top rim. So I'm going to kind of pull it tight around the edge of the handle on each side. And it really helps if you have a new blade on your knife because it'll cut a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna cut off the excess and then I'm going to hold my knife at an angle so that I'm trimming kind of a little bit of the vinyl from the surface of the handle because I don't want anything to hang over or crinkle or lift. So I'm taking my time, really go slow with this, and holding my knife at kind of an angle so that I get a little bit of that vinyl cut off from the surface. So you'll see here that I show a little bit of that stainless steel on the top of the handle, but it creates a really clean line and you're not even gonna see that excess or seam because like I said, we're gonna paint over this. I just wanted to have the option of kind of distressing the handle as well, which is why I added the vinyl. If you don't wanna distress the handle and you just wanna paint it, then don't even worry about adding your vinyl. But here's what our wrap looks like. Again, so proud and so Happy that this lined up perfectly. I'm going to seal my vinyl with Quick Coat from CCDIY. This helps the epoxy adhere to the vinyl so we don't have any issues later. I'm going to add a little bit of glitter to this epoxy to give the bottom layer a little bit of a sparkle. So I took Firefly from PDB and mixed in a little bit into about 30 milliliters of a little extra ink epoxy. I did not end up using the entire 30 milliliters. I think I used about 20. Um, just adding a very even coat to the entire surface of the cup. And I'm gonna let this cure about 12-ish hours before I go into my painting. If your glitter is kind of rough, if your epoxy isn't smooth or if you used a bigger cut of glitter, you might wanna go in with another coat of epoxy to make sure that your cup is totally smooth because we're gonna paint right over it. So I painted it black first, let that dry about 30 minutes and then painted the white over it. I let it completely dry. I would recommend leaving it like two to three hours to make sure it's totally dry. And then we're going to go in with our distressing. So I'm using cotton pads, paper towels, and 91% rubbing alcohol along with some acetone. The rule for this is that the acetone is going to remove the paint and the alcohol is kind of going to clean up your area and not remove as much paint. 
So I like to go in with the acetone first to get my paint off and show my little distressing and then go in with an alcohol paper towel or cotton swab to kind of clean up any of that paint residue that's left on our pattern underneath. Now when I'm doing this, I am kind of letting this black that I'm that's coming off when I'm distressing, I'm just kind of letting it go because I really want this to look rugged and kind of like, I really want that distressed kind of dirty look. If you don't want that, I would be a little bit more careful with your acetone. And once you're done distressing and you let your cup dry like overnight, you can go back in with some 91% rubbing alcohol, not acetone, and kind of clean up that black paint that's left on your white top, um, top layer. And it'll kind of help clean it up a little bit. I liked this black, so I was kind of letting it go all over the cup because I really like how it kind of shows through and it gives this gray tone to the whole mug. And I just really like how it looks. If you want a clean white, you don't want any black, you just can skip the black paint coat altogether and go right in with white paint and then distress from there. I really like the kind of rough and rugged feel that this has, and I like that it looks kind of dirty. So totally personal preference. You don't even have to do white. You can do cream. You can do brown. Of course, you can do any color you want, and it'll look really nice. So I'm just going to continue going back and forth with my rubbing alcohol and acetone, removing this paint in areas. I really wanted to show a lot of this buffalo check, so I removed a lot of the paint. I just wanted to leave a little bit for this distress feel. And remember, we did not wrap the bottom of our cup, so I'm paying attention to make sure that I'm not going too far down as I'm distressing because I don't want to expose any of that raw stainless steel that we have at the bottom of our cup. So as you can see here, I'm taking that kind of black paint as it comes up and I'm really taking it all the way up to the parts of the cup that I haven't even removed paint from because I kind of like that gray distress vibe that it brings. Um, if you don't like it, you can just, like I said, not bring your cotton ball, you know, that has the black residue on it. Don't bring it onto your white portions of your cup. But I did, so I brought it all the way around. And like I said, the way to do this is totally personal preference. If you wanted to layer three colors of paint on your cup, you totally can do that. If you wanted to just do one color of paint, you can do that. You can do any combination of colors. The sky's the limit. You can really go all out with this and make every single thing totally unique. After a while of going with my paper towel and my cotton balls, or cotton pads, whatever, I decided to go in with a dish rag to really help avoid any like dust or lint. I usually don't have issues with that, but it might have been the paint or I don't know, just the day. I had a few little like lint pieces and I wanted to avoid that. So I went and I grabbed a regular rag and just started with my acetone and alcohol using that. And obviously this goes without saying, you can distress as much or as little as you'd like. Like I said, I was taking off a lot of the paint because I wanted to show a lot of that buffalo check through. So I made my distress paint areas a little bit smaller than normal, but still enough so that it was balanced. Um, the most important thing is just kind of knowing when to step away and when to stop distressing. Sometimes I have trouble with that because I just want to keep going. So just make sure that you don't Go overboard and mess up your whole design and just make sure that you go until you're happy with everything. Once I was happy with my distressing, I added a really thin layer of epoxy to my cup. This is just so that we have a smooth, shiny surface for our decal. If you really wanted to, if you were in a time crunch or anything, you could go right into your decal after you do all of your painting. I just like to start with a fresh epoxied surface just in case anything goes wrong with my decal or anything like that. I always like to have a nice strong surface with a coat of epoxy. So I'm going to let that sit and cure about eight hours and then it'll be ready for our decal. So my cup is pretty smooth. At the very end we're going to do all of our sanding so we'll take care of the top rim and all of that. Um, for the decal I'm using this really cute sweater weather 
decal I got from Etsy. I will have it linked down below. And I just created a really thin offset in Silhouette Studio. I think it was uh, 0.35, 0 0.035 for my offset. And I'm doing basic black and white. So the white is our offset. So I'm gonna apply that first. And I applied my transfer tape and now I'm cutting off any excess backing and transfer tape from the top and bottom of the decal. So I have a little bit of excess transfer tape on the sides, which will help me kind of place it, lay it down, make sure that everything is lined up properly. And then I'll use the hinge method to actually apply the decal to the cup. For the top decal, I cut it out in just regular or Cal 651 black vinyl. I'm going to use that exact same piece of transfer tape that I used for the offset. And I'm going to place this decal over the offset piece by piece, how I always do. So I'm gonna cut it apart and just apply individually. You can totally do this in one, like one foul swoop, but I like to break it apart and make sure that I get everything lined up perfectly. And it's just a whole lot easier for me that way. So once I've got this decal on here, I'm going to go right into my final coats of epoxy. I'm gonna do one coat of epoxy and once that one cures, we'll go in and do all of our sanding. And then after the sanding is done, we'll actually go in with our real final coat of epoxy. So for this one, I'm using 20 milliliters of a little extra ink epoxy, just smoothing that all over the entire surface of the cup. Let it cure a full 12 hours before I went in and did all of my sanding. And once that was complete, I added my final coat of epoxy and that one was about 15 to 20 milliliters. Once it was fully cured, we were all done. So this is what the cup looks like, the final result. I really love how it turned out and it gives me like major cozy, fall sweater weather vibes. So I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope this helps you with your vinyl wrap and distressing, and I can't wait to see what you create. So if you use this tutorial in any of your designs, please be sure to tag me in your photos at made by Manny and Mal on Instagram so I can come and show your creation some love. As always, if you like the video, please don't forget to give it a big ol' thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed to our channel so you don't miss any new videos. I am so grateful for every single one of you. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Okay, love you. Bye.